hear what God will speak. Tender words for a burdened people. Comfort, comfort my people. The day of sorrow are ending. Let us hear what God will speak. Encouraging words of an anxious people. Prepare a way for the Holy One. In the deserts of despair, build a highway for our God. Let us hear what God will speak. Words of vision for a weary people. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Come, let us worship. O Holy One, you are tender shepherds, architect of the way, beguiling hope of all who go looking for you deep in their lives. Surprise us here with sweetness, with challenge, with vision. Whatever we may need in this moment to recognize you and follow you into the future. We pray in the name of Jesus, the beloved. Amen. Amen. I invite you to take a second to wait and greet at those in the service since we can't shake hands.
sit so close to the TV. That's a good one too. There's a bunch of these short, quick reminders that we all probably have. Um, don't stare. And one that comes to mind today that's especially appropriate is, and maybe you had this or not, I'm not sure, but don't point. I mean, did you ever hear that? That you're not supposed to, Did you ever hear that? That you're not supposed to point it? Right? Lots of us are brought up to believe that polite folks don't point. Right? The only thing you can point at are things or animals. Or maybe if there's an emergency or some great distance, like way over there you can point. Like those are acceptable. But other than 
than that, apparently you're supposed to refrain from pointing. And it probably bothers all of us when people point at us. Right? Especially if it's a surprise and catches us off guard. <laughs> Language reference books talk a lot about this and say that in the primitive days, the pointing finger was considered the finger that administered a hex on people. That's how it started. You're not supposed to do this because you didn't want to hex anyone. Pointing is labeled non-verbal stigmatization. Add that to your vocabulary this week. Non-verbal stigmatization. So think about it. When something happens in our government and someone wants to blame someone else, what do they do? They point the fingers at them. If something happens on our favorite reality television show and one person doesn't behave the way we thought they would, what do they do? Somebody points their finger. Or your favorite sitcom, someone gets blamed. They did it, not me. Everybody is familiar with the idea of pointing fingers at others. Because the idea of pointing fingers comes with some blame, doesn't it? If someone points at you, you feel like they're blaming you for something. Think of a courtroom scene where the lawyer asks the witness, do you see the person in the room that committed the crime? Could you point them out so we can all see who you're talking about? One of the reasons we think pointing is, is so rude um, and maybe even demeaning is because finger pointing prods at our vulnerabilities a little bit the ones we all share. Um, because if you don't get pointed at, for example, if you're in a group and I point at you, the people next to you are thinking, that's not me. Maybe they're thinking, whew, that's not me. Lawyers pointing always has to be negative. Why does it always? You know something? You're a good person. Right, it could be that. It could be that. It could be that. It hardly ever is. It hardly ever is. You're right. You're right. John the baptizer is a pointer. This is what he does. Now, we shouldn't be surprised that he kind of ventures out into some of this rude behavior, right? Because he's kind of a rough character. He's not afraid to let other people see him point. And he's not afraid to break any rules about etiquette. And he is pointing for us in this story. John the baptizer's entire purpose is to go, this guy. This guy is the guy. This one has more, is better, can do it, will change things not pointing at himself. And he recognizes very clearly that I can't do the things this guy can do. I'm not worthy to even untie his shoes. He is pointing for us. Yesterday, Leighton and I spent a number of hours putting up some Christmas lights. And then once you start that process, you realize the gutters are dirty. And, you know, it leads to one thing, to the, the bushes need to be trimmed. All these lights and decorations at this time of year, they're pointing towards something, aren't they? Maybe not the finger that we're talking about as being rude, but they're gesturing towards something. When you see the lights, you think about the season. 
when you see the lights, you think about the festive nature of what's happening. They're pushing us in a direction. Everything we do in Advent, in these four Sundays of Advent, are pointing to a unique version of a unique God who is going to arrive in this unexpected way. The candles we light of peace and hope, they're not random words that are chosen. They're specifically pointing toward this child who is going to show up to bring these two very things into our world. And then subsequently, everything this child grows up to do points toward God and a genuine relationship that is wanted, that is desired for God's creation. So maybe we do some pointing to. Maybe not to gawk or embarrass or harass other people, but to take notice of needs that should be met. look there. That person needs a seat. Maybe we should share. Look here. This person needs a meal. How could we provide them? Look here. These people, this place, this community, this nation, this world is often broken and hurting. There is a spot. Here is a spot. There is a place. How can we respond? As Steve mentioned, when we point, it's easy to point out the negative things. It's easy to point out and be critical and judgmental of things. Uh, you missed a spot right here. But we point together this morning. We point back to the scripture just like John the Baptist did when he was saying, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make God's path straight. Someone is coming. It's going to change everything. It is going to transform the world. You got it? Amen. This prayer time, constant, and we invite you as always to just lift up somebody, something, whatever, that you would like to go before the throne of God, as we go before the throne of God. And that we will keep you in prayer all week long. Truly, I think and praise God. Well, with what we've heard, we will all go to God in prayer. As I tell you, God is able to hear. He has a listening ear for each and every one of us. And as it's said that, you know, we, as we go to a community prayer in this sanctuary, He is able to hear each and every one of our cries. So, let's go to God in prayer as you pray. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, here, my own will cry. While on others thou art calling, O oh, do not pass me by. O oh, gracious and loving God, we thank you. O oh, God, we thank you for the opportunity to be able to come to the sanctuary, Lord God, here at Clarkston, United Methodist Church, where we can be one with one, Lord God, knowing that you are the one. And as we lift our arms to your throne of grace, your throne of mercy, your throne of healing, O oh Lord God, we uh, submit and we thank you for all blessings. We thank you for, Lord God, keeping us in perfect peace. And Lord God, we truly ask you to forgive us of our sins, our individual as well as collective sins, Lord God. Only you can do that, Lord God. And we thank you on the second Sunday of Advent. 
oh my God, for being more in your will, doing what you would have us to do. Lord God, we can't make it down here without you. And as things are of the public or, or as the health officials are announcing that things are going worse and worse, and as far as people coming down or inheriting this virus, Lord God, we ask in the name of Jesus to keep control, keep control, keep control. Even though there are those who don't seem to think it is necessary. They don't even bother. Oh my God, they, to follow the health officials' guidelines. But we as children of God will humble to do so. Now Father God, continue to keep all the brother and, 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 and his overcoming of the virus. Being one in testimony that I overcame it. I was in the hospital and come on up out of it. And it's nothing like it. It is a different kind of illness. But Lord, you know that. You know that. So Lord God, individually as well as collectively, all of those across the world, you ask Lord God. Lord God, continue to keep us in perfect peace. Because we can't make it without you. We just can't, Lord God. And Father God, continue to remember the students, the young folk, Lord God. All those who are trying to undo their educational process. Things they need to do. And even though they may be virtual, but some are going into the classroom. Meeting fellow classmates, Lord God. Oh, keep them covered, Lord God. Oh, keep them covered, Lord God, in your blood. And Lord God, we know if you cover them, all will be well. Cover those who are having to go to their different jobs, Lord God. Those who all oh, have to uh, supply the needs of individuals, Lord God, and their families. Lord God, cover them. And Lord God, supply their need. Each and every one of them supply their need, Lord God. We're approaching, oh Lord God, this season of your birth. And Lord God, may the spirit of your truth, your faithfulness, your love, your grace, your mercies, Lord God, be abound as we go through this celebration. And as we look up to the hills from what's come about here, knowing all of it is coming directly from you. Yes, we have sad moments where those who have passed, and Lord God, you know that story. You know all about it. You know just what we stand in need of. And you told us in your word before you let us go down. Oh my God, and perish like something that is awful. Those of your servants who will bring home to you to relieve them of that suffering. And we thank you for that, Lord God. Even though we'll miss them. Mm. Oh God, we're missing. Yes, Lord, and as our co uh, co uh, member here, my God, Rhonda Maria, who is going to lay to rest, her knees, oh my God, give her traveling mercies as she comes back here, oh Lord, but as she leaves, leave, Lord God, your comfort of remains and abides with the family as a whole. Oh Lord God, we just lift up the sick and the shedding here that has reported to Clarkson and those that we don't know. Lord God, we lift them up to your throne of grace and mercies and healing. Oh, to bring them forth, Lord God, keeping them as they as well as they are kept. Father God, we continue to lift all oh, the sanctuary, all oh, this those that have Thought it not proper to get up and come out and be one in the midst. And also, please remember the head of this flock, Lord God, the pastor, Pastor Lindley, and his family, each and every one, Lord God. Oh God, we just thank you for loving something. Thank you, oh my God, for the joy and the peace that you give us. We thank you, Lord God. So, Lord God, please don't pass us by. Don't pass us by, Lord God, because we are here in the wilderness, seeking what we can, what we can, and what we need. In 
Jesus' name. So Lord God, as we close up this prayer, we don't want you to fail to grant us all that we stand in the need of. We don't want you oh, to leave us, Lord God, because you even bless us with things we don't know we need, Lord God. We thank you for it. Oh my God, we thank you for it. And we depend on you. We depend on you, Lord God, because you can see much further in our futures than we can ever see, Lord God. So continue to keep our families. Oh, and our friends, our loved ones, our church members. Oh, Lord God, and each and every one that's a member of this congregation, continue to keep us, Jesus. Oh, it's a servant's prayer. We all your servants, Lord God. Continue to keep us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank God. Thank you again for joining us today. I hope that your week is one that is safe and full of the two lights that we light today. And I encourage you to receive as your benediction now, if you would stand as you are able. To go as people of peace and hope and point the way to that light. Amen. Amen.